and welcome to Time Travel Comics. Here we take a look at covers and interior artwork with a particular theme in mind. And today we're going to explore the unidentified object or UFO. And this is a flying saucer. The flying saucer has been a distraction in American culture since 1929 when it was first appeared in science fiction magazines and also pulp fiction story. And Science Wonder Stories, that was printed in 1929, first depicted a round saucer-like spaceship that would travel to Earth carrying with it extraterrestrials. But it wasn't until 1938 that on a radio broadcast by a young 23-year-old Orson Welles did we have the introduction of the UFO. And that was War of the Worlds. And that caused a nationwide panic as people listened to the radio thinking it was real. Orson Welles didn't know that he did that at the time and had to change his show later on. And guidelines were produced in the country to prevent that from happening again. So from 1938, we actually have a record account of an actual UFO sighting on June 24th of 1947 when a civilian pilot by the name of Kenneth Arnold saw in the sky nine crescent-shaped flying objects. And this was over Mount Rainier in Washington State. He described what he saw to the news reporters, who actually mistakenly wrote that it was the flying saucer that they saw, and not the nine crescents that Kenneth Arnold was referring to. So that piqued curiosity, and ever since then, Americans have been looking up to the sky to see if they can find a UFO. A month later, in July of 1947, a crash of a UFO was reported by newspapers in Roswell, New Mexico. The subject was shrouded in mystery. The thought of an extraterrestrial landing and crashing on Earth was a shock. And not much is known even today about what really happened, but it made way for great stories and science fiction, and also the subject of countless movies and comic books. So we're going to look at as many as we can at UFO sightings as we point them out one by one. I'm going to use our time machine to bring us those books using uh, coins from the past. I have a few coins in my hand from 19... 55, 1960, 1968, and 1970. So around that era, we're going to see what we can get. As I load the time machine here, we all can't help but remember a movie or story that we like with a flying saucer in it. And if you have one in particular, please leave it in the comments section below. As we let our time machine gear up and work as it's connected to everything here, we are going to be in for a treat. We are going to explore the flying saucer. Let's check our time machine to see how things are going. And it uh, looks like uh, we're close to getting our first book. So we're going to set this aside right here and wait for our first UFO book cover. And just like that, here we are, The Outer Limit, number five. This is from January, March of 1965. We're immediately greeted by a wonderful painting, not much illustration, but a painting of uh, flying saucers uh, coming close to a group of kids here uh, playing with a uh, rocket. And it looks like one of them got carried away to bring down a UFO. 
How about that? A fiery flame and the green men are quickly running after him. That's a, kind of a scary scene right there of uh, trying to run away from the extraterrestrials. But look at the artwork. The shadows of the underbellies of the UFO in their disc-like shape. The uh, Wearing the glasses there. And this just screams the 1960s. This is a Dell book. It was that iconic Dell stamp, that 12 cent uh, Silver Age stamp. And this is Jack Sparling. Uh, Jack Sparling also did the inside of the book in, in the interior artwork uh, that he penciled. But the cover uh, he did as well. And The Outer Limits is a uh, shorter series. And it comes with quite a few books. Uh, Sparling actually worked with uh, Harvey Comics. He also did Charlton Comic uh, and Classic Illustrated. And Classic Illustrated holds a place in my heart because uh, they were the earliest comic books I ever read. Uh, they belonged to my mother's uh, collection. And over the years, I've been adding to them to uh, complete them. And it's just nice to see the classics condensed into illustrated form. And Jack Sparling did a lot of the work for them. Just uh, not all of them, but uh, a few. Uh, Jack is a Canadian comic artist, and his career spanned from 1950 to 1970, and he even worked with uh, DC Comics uh, for the Challengers of the Unknown. Looking uh, inside of Sparling's work, we could see that UFO right there, and uh, even in the, as we open the cover, whizzing by the motion that we could see. And uh, did a lot of justice to flight and space and movement. Uh, look at how these flying saucers are hitting the ground. In this story, a, one of the extraterrestrials helps the boys uh, that inadvertently struck down the saucer to uh, save humanity and programs the saucers to uh, crash. I don't want to give it all away, but talk about adventures uh, when you're young. There are two stories in here, and uh, one of them includes the little green men. Very simplistically drawn, not a lot of shading, not a lot of depth, but nonetheless, they take on the action. And from 1965, the space age was pretty much in full-fledged. It permeated a lot of culture, uh, especially in America. And... And you can see, even in the comic books, aside from toys and games, that the space age was here to stay. As we venture away from the Outer Limit number 5, we are going to look at Outer Limit number 16. So this is further on in the run. Another Dell book, and I picked this one up with Captain Strange Life just a couple weeks ago as we were browsing the Chicago Comic and Toy Convention. And you can see here it's uh, missing a piece right in the cover. And it's a very delicate book, very brittle pages, a lot of spine roll and spine creases. And I'm going to go very slow to open up the cover because I don't want to break the book. Oh, I did it again. I turned the page too fast and it just broke apart into a million pieces. Oh, darn, the irony. Those brittle books. I should stop getting those low-grade Leo books. But we can fix that like this. A nice fine copy of The Outer Limits. And we can see how nice and smooth it is, especially with a black cover. And even the corners are nice and smooth. Just at the snap of a finger, we can fix that low-grade problem. Even the spine is nice and smooth. And this is kind of hard to find Dell books from this time in good condition because usually there are a lot of color breaks and folds on the cover. But uh, this happened to be a nice little upgrade from the last one we saw. And this book here came, came about in November of 1967. And we're going to look for another UFO sighting. And we'll see here. There are a couple stories. So the second story actually has, there it is, the UFO. As the public is trying to figure out what it is, looking inside the glass dome. And none other than the extraterrestrial 
with an enlarged head and a cerebral-like look and stern eyes, is attempting to hypnotize humanity to have his way and slowly take over the planet. You can see Mr. Mind, as his name is in the background, working his magic to uh, hypnotize the people. And it's fun to see how Jack Sparling draws some of the people days, like this gentleman at the soda fountain and this couple here, and how he kind of has them, uh, their mind tricked into doing what he wants, even the military. So there's our extraterrestrial in the background in complete control. A flying saucer UFO sighting right there. And, uh, oh, look, a barn. A barn with the UFO uh, breaking away. So, in deep space. Love the 3D letters. Love the thrill of space at this time in the late 60s. And it's been going strong. It's a lot of fun. You can even see the trajectory of the UFO taken off from the space station the top of the space station, flying saucer sighting. So another gem, the outer limit, number 16, nice smooth copy that was fixed at the snap of a finger. A beautiful UFO cover coming and it is uh, Spaceman. So again, Dell Comics coming up here. And two different titles, The Outer Limits and Spaceman. When we see the trajectory of the UFO, you see the men inside, the uh, glass bubble, and rockets and ramparts and kind of a fiery scene right here with uh, explosion. And that doesn't look like it's going to go too well for that character there. And another book by uh, Jack Sparling. And Spaceman had another limited run. It's kind of taking in the beauty of the UFOs and the stories involved. And usually these stories had mystery and a sense of uh, trying to find out what's, what to do and how to outsmart the extraterrestrials that are usually hell-bent on taking over the world. And this time we have a madam, a lady, and uh, she kind of takes the whole show. She steals the show and trying to be like a double agent. So she's talking with uh, different people, arranging for a plan with the locals. And uh, kind of a riveting story to see the steps taken. It's not just action. It's not just all about UFOs exploding in outer space. It's, it's some serious uh, theme going on. And uh, look at that. So just a, 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 a neat find with the zooming UFOs here. Even our camera can't keep up here. And this is a dull book. And the, the date is from December and February of 1964. So this is actually a little bit earlier than The Outer Limits. Sp Spaceman. Again, September, November. This book is from 1963, issue number 6. And kind of a beat-up copy, some wear on the cover. Looks like a Stonehenge scene. Uh, rather Stonehenge and it looks like they're traveling back in time even though they're from the future and that's always a neat theme too again the flying saucer whizzing through the sun the uh, space swooshing by landing and it needs to see planetary and interplanetary happenings here I always love Star Trek. Uh, Star Wars, I, I am trying. Try, I understand it. I watch it. I enjoy it. But Star Trek always uh, was more interesting, and I like their ranks and chain of command. and And I bet uh, Gene Roddenberry was probably inspired by uh, comic books that came out at this time, as these were the main one, uh, especially by Dell. So, moving these aside. Uh, the last book I'll show you from Dell Comics, and I don't want to bore anybody out there with, by just showing Dell Comics, is uh, Flying Saucers number 5, and this is from 1969. And it's a little bit later than the ones we saw because now we're at the 15 cent stamp uh, on the top. 
And there we are, the green men in space suits and the uh, UFOs behind them whizzing through. That's just pretty neat. The perspective, how they're spaced out, just love that cover. And the writing with the space of air and movement, uh, Flying Saucer Comics. So this is a compilation of a few stories uh, in one. And and again, uh, this is Jack Sparling and also another artist, uh, Frank Springer. So it's uh, his name is right in the corner, right there. Kind of hard to see. Uh, but uh, again, the Flying Saucers and our human race trying to adapt and understand why are they here, what are they doing, police are baffled. Uh, this time we actually see the, the extraterrestrials landing on the ground and gosh, are we that violent? Jeez. Um, if, further on you can kind of see the, the, the expressions that they have, um, the ones that are visiting from outer space. And in this case, this story, they don't speak at all. They appear and they kind of startle the, the locals and, and uh, right in the window. That's spooky. Uh, but this is Flying Saucer uh, with Dell Comics. So the artwork really flows. And again, it's just a lot of line work, not too much shading, not too much uh, 3D. But for 1969, that's pretty cool. The UFOs. By now the 1970s are coming but still America's fascination is still holding strong and we even see our first DC book here and we're mixing the space theme with the horror genre and the house of mystery. Which is a number issue 230 and it came out in 1975 by DC Comics and this is a Luis uh, Dominguez cover. Uh, looking up Luis Dominguez he's done a lot of great work in the American horror and misty genre and it's the second story in this book uh, that we see the uh, UFO and the in the drawing. So look at the big jump from 1969 from Dell Comics to their refined, polished DC look. DC is always considered that uh, finer, well done, well polished uh, artwork in the comic book industry. Even the stars in the background, great job. Look at that. So a great uh, DC book. That Flying Saucer is just smack dab with the light, just a great cover. House of Mystery, Luis Dominguez, UFO cover. I'm going to throw in another one uh, by King Comics, and this one here is a camera is adjusting as Mandrake the Magician. Uh, number five, this is from 1967, so we're taking it back a little bit. And this time, Mandrake, who frequently appeared in the newspapers, uh, encounters alien. So we could see a common syndicated uh, cartoon is actually depicting the theme of the UFO. And Mandrake was created by Fred Fredericks Jr. And the magician is more or less like a secret agent. He kind of acts like uh, a detective and trying to figure things out. And in this mission, he has to encounter the strange spaceship uh, that he sees that comes from the volcano. So a theme here involving the uh, UFO and space, a spacecraft. And that includes Mandrake the Magician, issue number 5 from 19... 67. A great book uh, here is uh, Strange Adventures. I always like to show a couple books from Strange Adventures as I did in my first video. And this is Strange Adventures number 114. This is from 1960. And it's a Gil Kane cover. And Russ Heath did the interior artwork. And before I proceed, I want to send a shout out to Ranger Sly. Uh, Ranger Sly listed this book on his wanted list. 
And if you ever take a look at his channel, he does a great job of listing that wanted list from the Wild West. Uh, kind of with that sign with bullet holes, wanted. And Strange Adventures uh, 114 was on it. And this includes a uh, flying saucer that acts like a buzzsaw cutting through the buildings in New York City. And actually it was done uh, as the extraterrestrials and aliens were helping humanity by clearing a path to create an instrument to save the world. So even though this, don't want to spoil it too much as I might have done already, they actually help for aliens. But the cover, when you look at it in the newsstand, you're like, oh, look at that. They're going to be causing a lot of havoc. And, um, yeah, this is pretty neat. Gil Kane did a, a ton of covers, and it's just neat to see all the different uh, themes that he has done in the past. And there we are. There's a UFO sighting in comics. We saw it again. And just look at the detail. It kind of looks translucent right there. Quite an effect to pull off in 1960, that translucent, uh, vivid space look. Um, just uh, Strange Adventures always had a few stories. And, and this one actually is interesting too because it's the uh, first appearance of Star Hawkins and the robot assistant uh, Ilda, or ILDA. And Star Hawkins uh, starts out in this book and continues on for quite a few. And um, it's great. Gil Kane worked with Julia Swartz, the editor, and they made up a lot of great stories, including this one. Look at that. Great UFO cover. Yeah, check out Ranger Sly. He has a lot of great books, not necessarily Western, but uh, all of the above. This is a super DC giant, and this, uh, as our camera focuses in right here, is uh, a compilation of books, including the one we just saw. This is Strange Adventures 114. There are a couple other books as well. This is um, another image there that's taken from Strange Adventures 148. So different stories compiled together because in this giant issue, it's a reprint book from 1967. And it's a mega issue. It's got a lot of stuff going on. And again, up a flying saucer, another UFO sighting. And it's actually kind of the same one we saw because, again, it was that reprint. Uh, a crescent-shaped saucer here. And uh, this story is by Otto Binder. Joe Gila is the artist and Sid Green. And you see... Some, another, another little combat there with a the flying saucer, so there we have it. So if you ever get a chance to get it, and you want a lot of books in one, it's Strange Flying Saucers, and this is great, uh, number 27 from 1976, just leaping off the page. Nice condition too. And it's interesting that DC books at the time, they didn't do the square bound, so they kind of pressed it flat. And you could see that that uh, tab right there is in the same line of the cover. So if it was square bound, this would show more from the side, but it's kind of rolled on there. So, I don't know, I see that a lot and I said, oh, what if, what if, if it was square bound? Why didn't they do it? Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll put this book over here. That side story that we saw here with the postman is uh, right over there. And this is Strange Adventures 148. And, yeah, it's, it's a, a teacher from the future uh, talking about a person who saved the world from a uh, UFO invasion and it's the uh, year 2956 and you can see how the students are attentive in these futuristic uh, dust cubicle like furniture and uh, again this is going strong with the space theme because this is 1963 and in 1963 UFOs were popular, 
and teacher goes on to teach and this is the first story there are a couple stories in there and there we go there's a UFO so even the army's involved kind of tensely figuring out what to do as the the UFO is leaching water from the planet and the the postman figures out what to do so great book Strange Adventures, DC, representing the UFO. More DC here, and uh, this is a Gil Kane cover. This is an early one, Mystery in Space. Uh, they call it a grade tone, grade tone cover. And kind of see that UFO in the front, and we'll take it out of the bag so we don't get a glare. It's a beat up copy, so I keep it in the bag. So A, it looks good, and B, it keeps it together because most of my books can fall apart. And uh, yeah, this is from uh, 1958, issue number 45 of Mysteries in Space, Gil Kane cover. And this has a walking type UFO. Um, the saucer seems to be kind of parked on the in the front there, uh, but uh, you can see some of the artwork and the spacemen trying to figure it out. And eventually we'll get into some air taxis, so we'll see. <laughs> That's pretty good. The uh, limousine of space uh, taxi. Um, but the first story is uh, Gil Kane goodness and. There we have another UFO sighting for issue number 45. Pretty rough copy. Probably a partial spine crease, a 0.5 or a 1.0 at max, but uh, no chunks missing, luckily. <laughs> so, mysteries in space. Uh, the next book is a favorite of mine because the cover is amazing, and it's from 1958. And that is Mystery of Space, again another Mystery of Space. We're met with another Gil Kane cover, 45, 47, Mystery in Space, all from 1958. And it's a tug-of-war. You have uh, these UFOs that are more crescent-shaped, tugging the planet Earth with these rounded uh, discoid UFOs. And come on Earth, ships pull, pull. It's... Uh, Interplanetary tug of war. Just a great cover. Even he might think so. Let's see if we can get a UFO sighting in here by flipping the pages. You see the rocket. Another rocket. Somewhere there's a UFO. Gotta flip through the back. There's our flying saucers. Yeah, there's... There are the UFOs pulling. Yeah, another favorite UFO cover of mine is uh, from uh, ACG Comics. And ACG is uh, kind of harder to find. And this is Captain Battle and the Atomic Sub, and a great Golden Age artwork. And this is from 1955, and that comes after our reported 1947 sighting. So uh, it's an earlier work where, again, fiction has taken a hold of the UFO theme as um, Invasion from Beyond can be there. Uh, this is a Ken uh, Landau cover, and there's 36 pages in here, and there's seven stories, a whopping seven, seven stories, and the first couple are related to uh, different themes, but then we get into uh, the UFO. And then we'll see if we can get a UFO sighting. And up oh, there they are. There's the UFO. They're kind of parked in front of the ocean. I think they get wiped out. UFO sighting. Commander Battle in the Atomic Sub. Number 7. 
1955. Yeah, as we lo looked at this last book from 1955, uh, the next book is Space Adventures, and it's number 26 from 1958. So we jump from 1955 to 1958. The UFOs are going strong. Uh, looks like New York City as it's uh, on the top there, 46 in Madison. And this is a Rocky Master Stereo cover, and did a lot of great covers for Space Adventures in uh, Charlton comic but the interior of the artwork is Steve Ditko and this is when he was uh, doing some freelancing uh, before Spider-Man so it's neat to see Ditko doing space themes uh, before then. As we take it out of the bag it's, uh, it's a low-grade copy only because it's missing a piece here um, and the cover is pretty bad. It's actually detached but uh, we can see here our UFO, kind of landing, landing gear. So this is neat. We see our flying saucers landing. Great job, Steve Ditko. You have the caricature-like uh, depictions. Ditko always had a unique way of drawing faces. They were very uh, distinct and understandable. That you knew it was Steve Ditko um, as as you as you thumb through the pages. This almost looks like it's right out of Spider-Man. Um, but we want to see some more flying saucers. That's why we're here. And there we go. We see it again. This time in space. Space Adventures, number 26. 1958. Wow. Master Serio cover. Look at that. That's neat. Later on, Charlton uh, continued the theme. This is in 1967, so almost uh, nine years, ten years later, we have the UFO, and this is right on the title. And uh, a great story here. And take it out of the bag to so see some of the inside. This is from October of 1967, and by then, this was uh, Space Adventures number 60. And this is a, a fine con condition. Good creases, no break there. Try to handle with care. And right out of the pages, it's like a newspaper and it goes right through. Flying saucer spotted again. Great, great stuff over here. More flying saucer covers. And uh, it's always about the locals and us humans trying to figure out what to do. Space Adventure always aim to please. And Charlton Comics, a lot of uh, people went for the DC and Marvel, but they just had some great stories. Nice uh, Silver Age right there. And later on, this is another one too. You see the UFO right on the cover. And this actually includes time travel, so that's always a good thing. And uh, something through even at the beginning you could see the lasers and the quest begins and again the artist Steve Ditko Pat Boyette he also did the Peacemaker Jim Aparo eventually did work for um, for Batman some great covers uh, for Batman Jim Aparo uh, Pat Boyette was a mainstay with Charlton and Steve Ditko rocking it out with um, Charlton comics here Flying saucer, UFO sighting. Oh, there we go. This one has fins on it. Just nice to see how they depict it. Make it in for a landing. UFO cover. Great cover. Thank you, Charlton Comics. Just a couple more here. You got one there. Uh, yeah, this is Moon Trap. And this is actually was by Sal Trapani. Sal Trapani uh, did some work, and this is actually 1959. So we go back to uh, this time a robot. You can see another theme coming on with robots. Another great cover, Space Adventures number 58 coming at you. 
and uh, this is from 1964. Space Adventures from 1964, issue number 58, UFO cover. I see the UFO. Another sighting. Ooh, a melting one. The next comic book from our time machine, had a lot today, is uh, actually a reprint book. I.W. Uh, reprints. Uh, they did a lot of uh, summarization of books like Planet Comics and also Mysteries and Western. And you see that Pyramid I.W. logo? Uh, it's a reprint. So this is issue number nine. And they were out of order. There's not like a one to nine they seem to just randomly pick a title and put a number by them and in here we have the beautiful artwork uh, from from the time of uh, planet comics i'm just kind of thumping through the page here kind of more golden age. In the golden age they weren't afraid to show like skulls and scary things. Later with the comic code uh, they polished up their image a little bit better but uh, some of the older ones were kind of some grotesque scenery, some shocking scenery. This looks like the War of the Worlds tentacle alien. We're looking for a flying saucer. Are we going to get it? Are we going to see the flying saucer? Oh, flying saucer sighting. Or space station. IW reprint. Another ACG book coming. ACG with Adventures into the Unknown. Uh, great horror genre. And this is actually the last book of Adventures into the Unknown before they started doing reprints. So UFOs, bunk or the real thing. In comic books, they're the real thing. And trying to get to our story because it looks, seems like it's all the way in the end. There's that UFO sighting. Let's see if it's on the next page too. Oh. They're different. They're, they're more ape-like. They're not the men in green. There's UFO. Our next book is uh, from Atlas Comics. So we've gone from ACD, ACG to Charlton to uh, DC with uh, House of Mystery. But then we have Phoenix number one and right there's a uh, UFO cover. UFO sighting. Man down. This story uh, premises around a hero that eventually, with his suit, can uh, fend off enemies and have superhuman strength and power. And this came around the 70s. In fact, the Alice Comics uh, had a short-lived window with uh, Larry Lieber, a cousin to, to uh, Stan Lee. Uh, kind of starting out with his own comic line. And this is from November, uh, January of, of 1975. So, you have the UFO sighting. Yeah, last but not least, we're going to end on the story that started it all and started the uh, craze of uh, UFOs and and extraterrestrial invasion and that the war of the worlds by hg wells this is from a classic illustrated line and issue number 124 this is a first printing actually there are multiple printing and uh it, it just chronicles the invasion from the great beyond and these squid-like octopus invaders and this caused a lot of stir back in the radio program, as alluded to before. So that wraps up our UFO sightings. We saw quite a few books with a theme. If you have a comic book or know of a title, please comment 
in the comment box below and we'll see if we could research it and find out where it is if there's more. Thank you for watching Time Travel Comics, where we take a blast to the past and explore themes in comic books. And we looked at the UFO. Quite a few sightings, many sightings in comic books. From DC to Dell to Charlton Comics, ACG. And it's just some great covers. It's a real rich history of space travel from the late 50s and, and 60s and 70s and the, the mysteries of the UFO have made for great stories. If you like what you saw today, uh, please give a thumbs up. If you have a favorite UFO uh, comic or cover or something that we should all take a look at, uh, please list it below.